Zena, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Dr. Sam. Thank you. Uh, tell me, I mean, this is, I don't know how old this issue is, but, uh, you know, recently we started to hear from people such as yourself who have, you have a problem going home. What's, what's going on? <laughs> um, to put it simply, yes. Um, well, I mean, this has started since the establishment of the State of Israel, but since 2006, uh, Israel has escalated their confiscation of Jerusalem IDs um, in addition to uh, the travel documents and denying Palestinians their right to go back home and to live in Jerusalem in particular. Um, so it has escalated tenfold, I believe, in, in the past few years. Um, but again, this, has, this is not something new. Um, this has been the practice of Israel, the, the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and, and, and of the population of Palestine. So uh, we're just seeing the materialization, seeing what they're doing materialize into um, the daily lives of Palestinians, affecting the daily lives of Palestinians. Uh, is it, I mean, is it more, the occurrence of, is it more now? Uh, this is why people are beginning to hear more and more of this problem? Yes, it has increased. I mean, it never stopped, but it has increased, and they have become a lot more blatant about it. So, um, so yes, it has increased. Now, now you came to the United States when you were 17 years old to go to, uh, you know, finish your education, go to high school, etc., etc., and you decided to marry someone from here, and this has become your second home. Exactly. Um, actually, I came here to finish my education. My husband is Palestinian also. He's Palestinian-American. So we both grew up in Palestine and, and uh, um, born and raised. So um, my attachment to Palestine is not merely a piece of paper, as you probably well know. Um, yes, well, uh, um, the United States is my, my second home. I currently live here. My son, my husband, and I live here. Um, but that should not deny me my right to live in Palestine, to live in Jerusalem, and be able to go back home to see my parents and my friends and my family. Um, as you mentioned earlier in your in your uh, presentation, uh, I do have an American residency, but I do not have an American passport. Um, in many countries around the world, if you, I mean, they do not allow dual citizenship, but that is not the case in in, in my situation. Um, I am born in Palestine, in Jerusalem. Um, when you are born in Jerusalem, uh, and since it's under occupation, illegally annexed by Israel, they gave us a Jerusalem ID card, which is a blue ID. Again, they... they uh, so you're not... So, so you practically don't really have a citizenship. Uh, they're not giving you the Israeli citizenship, and, <laughs> and the Palestinian... No, I, and if there is a Palestinian state, if there will be a Palestinian state, uh, you won't be considered as part of that state either. That's correct. Um, I do not have an Israeli citizenship. I am not Israeli. Um, and, in fact, one of their argument, arguments to me was, this time, was why doesn't she get an Israeli passport? Well, I'm not Israeli. I do not wish to be Israeli. And that, again, is part of their dissection of Israel into, um, you know, separating the Palestinians from the Israelis by... Uh, uh, kicking the Palestinians basically out of Jerusalem. Uh, you mentioned the settlements for one, uh, expanding the settlements around Jerusalem and incorporating them into Jerusalem, uh, uh, but also um, the, the cities that used to be considered Jerusalem that are the majority Palestinian, actually, in fact, all of them are Palestinian, are now being pushed away and incorporated into the West Bank. Um, as, as a means to decrease the Palestinian population in Jerusalem and, and for the majority to become Jewish or Israeli. So, uh, no, I am not Israeli. I, am, I do not have an Israeli passport, nor, nor do I wish to have one. But, but just, just for clarification purposes, even if, I mean, we do have Arab Israelis, those who... Uh, remained on the land sure. after 1948. But even if people in Jerusalem, if they want to get that citizenship, they're not allowed. I just want to make that sure. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it is not a choice for Palestinians in Jerusalem to become citizens. Right, right. Okay. Just want to make sure that we clarify uh, that. Because, um, th this is, I mean, how many, I, I know this is what they're trying to do is to cleanse uh, Jerusalem. They want it to be only for Jews and no Christians and no Muslims. And uh, you happen to be a Christian, correct? That is correct, yes. There a, is there an Israeli policy to drive more Muslims or more Christians, or is it everybody that treated Muslims and Christians the same? 
Um, I do not think the occupation discriminates between Christian and Muslim. I think uh, the the point and the aim of the occupation, of the Israeli occupation in Jerusalem and in Palestine as a whole, is to rid the area of Palestinians, uh, regardless whether they're Christian or Muslim. Um, so, yeah, I, I do not think they discriminate at all. How did this affect your life? Um, look, I'm Palestinian, like I said, born and raised, and anybody has the, anybody and everybody has the right to go home to their land, to their, their uh, city, to their country at any point they wish to do so. In my case, and in the case of thousands of other Palestinians, specifically in this case Jerusalemites, have been denied their right, their international human, human right, to go back to their, uh, to their home. So it not only poses a political issue for me, but it's also very personal in the sense where I am not able to go see my parents as they still live in Palestine, my family, my friends. So in, in that sense, um, it has a very personal effect on, on, on my life. Um, but generally speaking, I, I, like everybody else, I do want to have the right to go home at any point, at any time I wish to do so, just like a, any citizen of, of any country around the world. Um, and, I mean, in, in my case also, it took so much for me to be able to travel to the United States, and not just, actually, not just in my case, in the case of many Palestinians, you have to apply for visas and, and, and you know, uh, stand in line and, and get renew documents, and, and as everybody knows, I mean, it's not an easy process. Once you get here and, and you start a life here, it does not mean that you let go of your your birthplace. It does not mean that you let go of your homeland. It is merely an extension of who you are. Do you know of many people who actually lost their ID, their Jerusalem ID, and now they are hanging in limbo? Absolutely. Um, just, I mean, the same time I lost my ID, the same time they revoked my ID, to, to be correct about that, using the correct terminology, um, a good friend of mine also lost hers, and in her case, she has a, a, a young child and the, he was denied visa to, to go home and, and to leave Palestine at that point, I believe. Um, and, and not just that my cousin was, in, was uh, her ID was revoked. There's, this is... Why, uh, do, like they, why do they revoke, this, why do they revoke IDs? What, what did they tell you? Uh, we're revoking your ID because of what? Or your cousins? Sure. Well, they, they tell us that because we have citizenship or because we have residency here in the United States, we no longer reside in Jerusalem. But in our case, uh, our residency card, our Jerusalem ID card, is not just an ID card. It's not like if I live in Virginia, for those of you watching in the United States, it's not like I am living in Virginia and then I decide to move to Texas. Okay, I, I lose my, 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 Texas, my Virginia ID, but I do not lose my American citizenship. In our case, when you lose your Jerusalem ID, you are no longer, you no longer have any legal rights in Palestine as a Jerusalemite. So it is much more than much more than an ID. It's it's not merely a, a, you know an identification card. And I'm assuming your cousin lost her uh, ID because of the same reason she lives here. She has resi residency in the United exactly. States. Exactly. So essentially, what they're trying to do is get rid of all Palestinians living in Jerusalem. But also, in fact, by isolating Jerusalem from the West Bank and from Gaza, they are literally imprisoning the Palestinians there. Because when you have a Jerusalem ID card, or if you have a West Bank ID, regardless, you are not able to travel freely. To give you a small example, my husband and I. Uh, like I said earlier, are both born and raised in Palestine. He lives in the West Bank. I live in Jerusalem. I was born in, in Jerusalem. So I have a, a Jerusalem ID. He has a West Bank ID. Legally, based on Israeli law, we are not to travel in the same car or ride in the same car at any point, crossing any borders. When we're leaving Palestine using the bridge to go to Jordan, for example, we do not travel in the same, we do not go at the same time. They, they separate us. We are not allowed to travel together. Um, if they catch my husband in Jerusalem, he will have issues. If they catch me having him in my car, I will be in trouble. So technically what they're trying to do is, is keep the Palestinians who are inside Jerusalem imprisoned there uh, and unable to travel freely. And at the same time, those of us who, who are out of Jerusalem trying you know, to, to survive somewhere else, uh, but not lose our identity and our relationship to Palestine, are essentially kicked out. 